everyone. It's Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, and we're here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit San Francisco 2017. Joined by my friend, CEO of JFrog, Shlomi Ben Chaim. Hey, Anna. JFrog. Nice to have you here, Shlomi. Great to be here again. So, full disclosure, I should tell, tell everyone, I, was, I had the pleasure of traveling to Israel and uh, speaking and appearing at an internal conference that you know, JFrog puts on for its employees from around the world. And uh, first of all, congratulations on building an amazing, amazing company. But what I wanted to talk about, Shlomi, is we speak so much at these DevOps events. You hear about culture, 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 culture. Culture is more important than tools. Culture is more important than everything. It's about culture. And you have built, I don't want to embarrass you, but you've built a beautiful, beautiful culture. Diverse in terms of men and women. People from India, from Spain, from California, from Israel, from all over the world, right? Uh, a meritocracy. People who do the best job, who do the best work, get get promoted and, and rewarded. But more than that, without giving away too much, even even picking who gets the best hotel rooms at a at a conference. <laughs> <laughs> right? The executives don't get the best hotel rooms. No. People who Never. deserve it based yeah. on the merit. So when we talk about building a culture, th this, is, this is the kind of culture that, you know, companies out here, there's the, all these enterprises, they can only hope for this kind of culture. How do you do it? Was this something of forethought that you consciously said, we want to build that kind of culture? Or did it just happen? Share it with our audience. So, first of all, thank you. I'm, I'm flattered, and then we were honored to have you in mm -hmm. our uh, internal event. So, you know, sometimes you don't do things for, for the sake of marketing. You just right. do it because you are part of the community. And to be honest, um, I, I don't even know one company that can build it with one uh, thought leader that, that kind of push it all. It, it should be a team walk. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so as you mentioned, we started in Israel in 2008, and um, while we were expanding JFrog and go global, I think that the one thing that we didn't want to lose is, is the values. It's what we call the JFrog Codex. Mm -hmm. And the Codex was, for us, was a tool to preserve our culture. We build JFrog as developers for developers, and then we, we kind of involve together to the DevOps market with JFrog. The DevOps market actually happened with, with us. And it was important for us to preserve it. So the one thing that we do in JFrog, and we do it every time with every process, from sales to R&D to marketing to budget, everything is bottom up. And so the codex, the J4 codex, which is the set of values that we believe in. And we ask our employees uh, in 2013, when we were 60, 70 employees only, we were completely panic about us losing our DNA as mm -hmm. we go global. We asked them, what do you think the J4 is? And two days after, we got 250 applications with their own words telling us what are the values of JFrog. So you will find things there that are not the common language of, of, uh, of values. But when an employee of JFrog writes customer happiness, community happiness, and not customer satisfaction, there is a big deal behind it. Mm -hmm. it we are not in the business of satisfaction. Right. We are in the business of happiness. We are part of the community. When a value is win we win together and the value is think big and people are writing every detail counts then i know that i'm sitting here with you on the other floor there is the exhibition and, and my team is just talking there right this is how we preserve uh, our values from from the hiring process to the end of whatever relationship we have with employees customers and partners we are following the j4 codex Excellent. we are very proud of them. And this, you have what to be proud of. It was, it was, it was a, uh, a revelation to me. Thank you. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I've spoken about it since I've come back to people about this is, this is how you build a company. You know, and what was a little fascinating is while you don't have 20,000 employees yet, uh, even building it to 250 or whatever the number is, 300, 
that's still a, a sizable organization to maintain across geography too, and yeah. you know, around the world. When we fill the Gulf, we fill the stretch, it's, it's 260 employees, but in five different countries with yes. five different languages and five yeah. different time zones, and, and, and everything is different. So yeah. even the labor laws are different sure. in France than it is in Israel than it is in the Silicon Valley. And, and one thing that have to unify us is our values, and we are also a very goal-driven company. Yeah. So when we say that our mission is to make software updates liquid and to make software liquid, then the team, everyone in our team, no matter what your job in JFOG is, you have to be aligned to the same goal. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about JFrog now, though, from in terms of product. Mm -hmm. So we've interviewed you before, and we know about Artifactory, and there's billions, was it 4 billion, 6 billion? How many? Of the total addressable market? Right. 6 billion, well, according to Gartner and Forster right. and this guy. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's, there's an amazing thing here. But when we talk about artifacts, I don't know if everyone in our audience truly understands what we mean. What is an artifact? Mm -hmm. right? it's, not, it's not something we dug up in archaeology in, in Israel. It, it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not it's that a, artifact. It's not that kind of artifact. <laughs> but what is an artifact? So software artifacts, uh, as we say in JFrog, is everything beyond source code. Mm -hmm. So if it's not your source code, if it's not what you use in order to build artifacts, then it belongs to the binary side, to the artifact mm -hmm. side. In, in, in a more detailed way, I would say that the, the value of a software artifact, the value of binaries, is that it comes with, with a lot of information that you can actually use as you automate and escalate, escalate your, your release process. So you need the metadata. And you need it to be updated, and you need it to be just part of the of the puzzle that you keep building, recompiling, rebuilding, releasing, and um, it's not something you do with with your source code. Your right. source code is just laying, laying there. Well, not just. It's very important, of but course. it's at the code repository like Git, like Perforce, like uh, Subversion, and your binaries are alive. You are rebuilding with it. You're recompiling, recompiling it. And, and you also use it for security reasons and test reasons. It's everything that you need to be active in your DevOps flow. And, and let's be fair, sometimes you could get artifacts that you didn't necessarily write. They're, they're not your source code. There's a third party artifacts, right? And this is a big part of the, the component way of building software. We're hearing a lot about a term called low code development. Familiar? Not yet. <laughs> okay, I'll look it up. Low no. code, L O W code. A okay. couple companies recently have been, but it's a similar kind of thing where they they are emphasizing to their development teams to build these applications with as little new source code as possible. Yeah. So in other words, low yeah. amount of new code okay. being written. Low amount right. of efforts. Right. It's you don't, much faster. You don't build everything from scratch uh, anymore. And not only that, build as little as you need from scratch. Right. Better to just glue these together, Frankenstein yeah. it, or whatever you <laughs> Some people call it that, right? But, you know, and, and there's your app. So every organization today, Alan, every organization is fetching software from the internet. Right. This is why you need a very strong proxy machine. You yeah. need to cache stuff because open source is, is, is everywhere. And on top of it, every organization also creates its own binaries. And in order to manage it all as one big group in the same repository, you need to understand binaries. You, know, you need to understand that these binaries comes with dependencies. These binaries comes with different, different versions and, and different metadata. And in order to, to make this all happen as one orchestration, you have to build a, a repository that can go and proxy Get, that can do cleanups, mm -hmm. unlike like a code repository, and can also manage binaries and metadata for your build info. Yep. This, is, this is how Artifact is different. That nailed it for me. One quick thing, I'll yes. let you go. Let's talk about X-Ray. X-Ray, wow. OK. So security is something near and dear to me. And, and so when we talk about using artifacts or binaries or third-party code, or whatever you want, low code, whatever you want to call it, to me, the, it's a security issue, right? And, and it's a risk issue. Mm -hmm. tell, tell the audience, what do we, what do, we do in X-Ray to, to help with that? So 
what, what we do in JFrog, and then I will d dive into X-ray specifically, mm -hmm. what we do in JFrog is basically everything be before Kubernetes, right? Mm -hmm. We know that the deployment is now kind of being standard uh, uh, with, with Kubernetes and the community, and we are part of it. And before that, you have your Git repository, you have your Jenkins or, or whatever CI server you use, and, and a very big part, a very big land of managing your artifact, your binary, it's just mm -hmm. what we spoke about before. In order to provide a complete picture in this, in this uh, landscape, what we have to provide is, number one, a place to host and manage your artifact with a full integration with your DevOps uh, mm -hmm. tool stack. We need to provide you with a very powerful distribution platform. This is our JFOG Bintray. An admin tool to manage all of this orchestration with JFOG Mission Control and the insight for your CIO mm -hmm. ROI uh, uh, insights. And you have to secure it. But you have to, to, to leverage it to a level that infosecs, infosec are not getting panic. Yeah. And they know that automation is not against them, it's with them. And in order to, to do that, what we did with X-Ray is something very unique in the market. On one leg of X-Ray, we, we rely on the metadata comes from Artifactory. That's mm -hmm. what we spoke, the binaries, yes. the, 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 the treasure that binaries can come with. And on the other leg, we, we integrate X-Ray with all the venerability, license compliance, and other, uh, other databases in the world. Together, what we can provide is a very unique, and this is why we called it X-Ray, mm -hmm. a very unique insight into your all um, release flow. From your container, what happened in this container, what kind of Debian package, for example, you have inside, and what kind of a Java class you have in the mm -hmm. Debian package. And today, going back to the open source question and everything that you proxy and fetch, Today, you need to have these dependencies to also have some impact analysis. Yeah. So X-Ray is different. It provides you with a component analysis that also gives you an impact, uh, analysis. An impact analysis on wherever you might be infected because of the dependencies that comes with binaries. Okay. And this is super automated, integrate, uh, of course, with uh, all of our tools and, mm -hmm. uh, and part of the market leaders. And uh, it's just a baby product, a bit more than a year. We already have more than 700 customers Beautiful. in production using X-Ray. You know what? Security is a big thing. Security is the next big thing That's in it. DevOps. Some may say it was always a big thing. They just didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> in our small world. Yeah, in our world. Anyway, Shlomi ben -Kayim. Pleasure Thank meeting you, you again. Thank you so much. Okay. Guys, this is Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV here at uh, Does17. Have a great day, everyone.